Uh, you want to make sure the tip of We're it. back here uh, with Clay here at Sushi Power Sports for part two of this video on how to use the boring bar. Make sure the tip's uh, below the surface. Just, you just lightly touch it to the outside. Lightly lock down your screws. So I pushed it out. I just lightly touched it up against there. Um, we're going we're gonna to raise it up enough so that so the cutting edge is above the surface of this. And almost everything I run fast. You can run fast or slow on this particular bar. Um, when you get into really, really big cylinders um, and the tool starts getting out, you know, it gets into tool speed, tip how fast uh, your, your tool is going across the metal. You know, the farther, the bigger circle you go, the faster it goes across the metal, you move it in, it goes slower. Um, so almost always I run it on fast. If it starts to chatter, you can put it on low. And then there's a, uh, this bar's got a, a dampener that you put on top of it if you're chattering and you can't stop it. But you got to be careful on some of your small cylinders, you know, because that's pretty good size that you don't put this on there, fire it up, and walk away. And this will pull down, hit it, ruin, you know, ruin the cylinder, do all that. I've got a mark there and a mark there. That just happens to be where I like to leave it for not getting a chatter, not going too fast. But said it was about oh we were within center within about half a human head to be in the center. Um, you can see where it's hitting the other side right now and it's not touching this side. But this side it's knocking all the carbon, knocking the little tiny bits of rust off. That tool is running through for super close. Now it's starting to hit um, on the other side too. So you guys can take a peek down in there, just don't get too close to get you know, now it's just starting to hit on that right, side. Yeah. Um, 
Switch your mic up your piston. Um, if you read the directions, it tells you how far in there. Just up into the into the skirt here a little bit is where you want to be. Uh, opposite, you know, 90 degrees from the pin. Don't try to measure it here. Don't take measurements. <coughs> you know, it's got to be down here. Um, pistons are wider at the bottom than they are at the top. You guys remember we just did this yet what yesterday in class? Uh, what was that ad average specification? What'd you say there? Above the bottom. Yep, 10 to 15 millimeters from the bottom of the skirt. Good job, Chris Robinson. <laughs> so, Michael Fister. Yeah. You know, it ain't so crucial in the uh, in the summertime because everything's pretty warm. Um, you want to make sure that your piston is the same temp as the cylinder you're checking. Um, you know, you want to have everything kind of room temperature. Because uh, these Ford's pistons will grow three thousandths, two, two, three thousandths, just by, you can put it in the refrigerator or lay it on the floor so all the heat sucks out of it. And then... Uh, put it underneath the light for a while. They, they dramatically change. Uh, so you want to have it at room temp. Clay, can I jump in here and, and throw a couple things out? Because we're, we're going to lose battery here too and uh, kind of finish off a, a summary before you guys finish watching this. Clay's going to mic up the piston here. Obviously the piston comes with a specification from the manufacturer. One thing we have to be really careful about is this aftermarket piston here has a specification right here, a 3 thousandths clearance. Remember us yesterday in class talking about the fact that it was a forged piston and we're going to have larger clearances. Um, if it's a cast piston, typically you're going to use the stock OEM specifications. Once he gets that boring bar set up to um, the spec, about how many thousands do you like to hone? Well, I was just telling these guys earlier, it depends on what kind of what the motor is. I mean, usually two, three thousands. Um, but if it's, you know, if it's, I just happen to know players four cylinder, or I mean four stroke four wheelers, four stroke, two stroke four wheelers um, are really soft. So you can easily hone. You know, you're not worried. You don't have to try to get it down to a thousandth. You know, if you're doing an XS 650, you know, you can get right down about, you know, a thousandth to hone out or so. Um, just because they're rock hard, and you don't want to be honing forever. Right. Just ran into some shovel head, aftermarket shovel head cylinders. Um, I had to hone three thousandths out of them. 
and it's an all day process getting 3000s honed out because you all got to hone it and then let it cool to room temperature mic it um, you don't want to hone it mic it yeah it's good and then walk then, then go to ship to the customer because it'll change on you Clay wouldn't you agree with me too that the uh you know, you that have been doing this a long time, you're real confident on your honing ability, but like the average Joe that hasn't done this a lot, they could end up putting a taper into the cylinder, honing it incorrectly. So as much as you can do on the boring bar and keep it straight as can be, you really don't want to be honing. I'm going to take a quick shot of this for this battery dies here too. This is a great honing tank here. This is that uh, uh, Winona brand here. You can see uh, uh, Critter here has got the hone in there. Uh, we're definitely going to use coolant. We have a bore gauge here. We'd finish off this process in this hone tank um, to come up with that last clearance specification, the smaller one and a larger one. Um, no real rocket science here. Uh, you're going to control the stroke at speed. We'll have more videos on honing in the future. But uh, guys, uh, overall, this is uh, what we got here for what it takes to uh, bore a power sports cylinder. Thanks a lot, Clay. We appreciate it.